backwards into the future? You betcha, Malone Ranger. <laughs> and you're going to need a guide on the periphery. I can see the present forming. And I remember to feel all that I hold in my hands, in my left hand and my right, all that I've been given. And slowly, deliberately, I step backwards and watch the future become present as I listen. Ha wo, ha wo, ho ba ha no, ha wo, ha wo, ha wo. When I was little, Growing up at Guishji, my mother's village on the Laguna Res, I was blessed to live with my grandma and my grandpa in their stone and mud house sheep camp, way out in the middle of nowhere. Team of horses, a couple of dogs, handful of chickens, me, that old man and that old woman, that's who we were out there somewhere. No PlayStation. <laughs> no, uh, what is that called? Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you would think a kid would be bored and lonely. When the evening came, I'd be there playing somewhere on the floor, and I'd hear this sound. Shh, shh. Looking up, I'd see Grandma. Shh, Papa, Motoe Ema. I'd be up and onto her lap, her arm around me, her mouth close to my ear, and she would say something like, Papa. Grandson, pay attention. Listen carefully. I am going to tell you something that maybe you won't even understand, but I'm going to tell you anyway. You're little and you're growing up. And one time she said to me, Grandson, I'm going to have to teach you to listen. She was right. I didn't understand. I got these big floppy things on the side of my head. I could hear her plainly. When she knew that I was listening, she would tell me a story. Stories are like seeds. They're just tossed into the air. You never know where they're going to land. When they come to rest in that fertile, soft, deep place within, they will sprout because they're alive. People refer to me as a storyteller. I believe that I am a story listener. And over the years, I've come to understand that the stories must be connected to the land. Maybe it's because in my oral learning lineage, 
I've had so many elders share songs, prophecies, stories of epic proportion, like the story of the coming of the Spanish and the return of the horse, the prophecy of when the cars will no longer fall off the road. We must be getting close if you can believe all the advertising. <laughs> I remember the story of oil, how the leaks and spills would come and what they mean. The return, the reconnecting of the continents. Stories and stories and stories about the people starting all over. Like the story of the sister moon who through man's arrogance, one of the moon sisters is blown out of the sky. And our earth, our planet, flips on its axis. These stories echo back and forth through time like wise songs. Even so, the story is more than a reminder of humanity or a teacher of tribal ways. It is a thing that people hunger after, need to remain alive, like a portion of clean water, fresh air, good food. If the American air has gone stale, the water turned murky, and the food filled with unnatural additives, can you imagine how unhealthy the story told has become? Today I find myself back on the land. as an artist, a hunter, gatherer, farmer, sharing stories around a small fire at a place called Hamadza. Hamadza is a story gathering place, 320 acres of ancestral land where we are learning to start over again. Anyone can walk backwards into the future. People just have to listen to what is it they hold in their hands. Look in your hands right now. What has been placed in your hands that you can care for? What is the story you tell yourself? Can we discover how children are born for peace? Hey. Maybe this is a good starting place for a story conversation or could it be at last the listening time where as reverent children Together, we can begin to heal the soul wounds of a nation. Yo, 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 yo,
Bless you.